At this time, I'll call the Dixon County Commission meeting to order for September 28th, 2023. Uh, one of the first things on the agenda is that of the flag salute. And since we have some honored guests here today, I'd like uh, you 4-Hers to step forward, please. And, and I'll have you lead us off in the flag salute. Since you're the tallest and maybe the <laughs> oldest, you punch it out first, and I know everybody else will will join. So we're ready for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, and we'll um, involve all of you in some comments a little bit later when we get to that portion of the agenda. So, The next item we have is approval of the agenda, and on that we do have one item to add, and that is a replacement engine not to exceed $50,000, and we will add that to the agenda, and I would move that we approve the agenda. 60,000, please. What did I say? 50. 50? Yes. Uh, really? Okay. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt there, but well, no, we now's the time. It. Now's the time <laughs> to, to mention it. Yeah. So we are adding the portion to replace an engine not to exceed sixty thousand dollars. Good catch. And with that, I would move that we approve the agenda as amended. And I'll second it. We have the motion and the second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of the September twenty second meeting. Also, the payroll of $364,101.99. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have the motion and the second for approval of the consent agenda. Any discussion or question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Commission comments, Ron. I'd like to see a little bit more rain, but it looks like harvest is going relatively well. and uh, That's all I have. Okay, Craig. Yeah, I attended a KAC meeting in speaking yesterday. Uh, we had a regular meeting, and then we had a policy committee meeting at two. Um, they'll be bringing that to the floor of the our annual convention in December. Uh, that's all I had, Lynn. Okay. Uh, last week I attended a Gold Star observance at, at Topeka. And then also earlier this morning, there was a Military Affairs Council breakfast, MAC breakfast over uh, at Junction City. And that's the host location, but involves uh, quite a few people from Fort Riley, um, as well as um, Dixon County, mostly Geary County, and had to do a little bit with their hospital and health care over there. And uh, they did show a video and talked about some of the health care. You think of the, I hear so much about the hospital over there. And then also Stormont Vale has a partnership and uh, is working with the, um, the, the local hospital and has expanded and that's working out very well. But they also had a video and it showed some of the health care that actually takes place um, when they're overseas and sometimes when they're engaging the enemy or, or, or various places there. And so um, it, it was very insightful. Earlier today, we had Lisa Berg in, and she's with the appraiser's office, and she gave us an update from the appraisal side of, of things here in the county. That's all I would have. The next item we have is, a, is uh, petitions, proclamations, and public comments. We do have a couple of proclamations here. And so the first one we'll have is in regards to Dixon County 4-H proclamation. So we'll have that at this time, and then we'll also have opportunity to have some comments uh, from some of our guests here. We're, we're going to ask you a few questions. You've you've been through this drill before, so. Thank you very much. Um, the proclamation is to declare October 1st through the 7th as Dickinson County 4-H week, which also matches up with National 4-H week. Would you like me to read? Yes, please. Perfect. Whereas 4-H is America's largest youth development organization, supporting nearly 6 million youth across the country, and whereas 4-H has helped youth in Dickinson County become confident, independent, resilient, and compassionate leaders, 
And whereas 4-H is delivered by Cooperative Extension, a community of more than 100 public land grant universities across the nation that provides experiences where young people learn by doing through hands-on projects in areas including health, science, agriculture, and civic engagement. And whereas National 4-H Week showcases the incredible ways that 4-H inspires kids to do and highlights the remarkable 4-H youth in Dickinson County who work each day to make a positive impact on those around them. And whereas 4-H's network of nearly 500,000 volunteers and 3,500 professionals provides caring and supportive mentoring to all 4-H'ers, helping them to grow into true leaders, entrepreneurs, and visionaries. Now, therefore, we, the commissioners of Dickinson County, do hereby proclaim October 1st through 7th, 2023, as Dickinson County 4-H Week, and encourage all of our citizens to recognize 4-H for the significant impact it has made and continues to make by empowering youth with the skills they need to lead for a lifetime. Then this day, 28th of September, 2023. Okay, thank you. Yes. And this is from the Chisholm Trail District. Um, we'll go ahead, go ahead. Yes, please stay there, but okay. we'll go ahead and um, we'll uh, have the motion to adopt this product. I'll, I'll make a motion. Second. We have the motion and second that we do adopt this proclamation for Dixon County 4 H week. And, um, and uh, so we're happy to sign that. And all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And so we have this copy, but also uh, you could kind of have your group come up. And then, Jill, if you'd want to tell us a little bit about the 4 H countywide on some of the achievements, a little bit of an overview of that. Sure. Um, I kind of feel like we're the showcase of the state. Um, and if you are up there by the podium, that way someone that's online or looks at the recording, they'll be able to see some of you that are here, so. All right, so would all of you introduce yourselves? And I'll start with you, since you're right here. My name is Janessa Watsky, and I am in the Navarre District Board. Okay, and tell us your projects that you work on. My favorite projects would probably be crafts, floriculture, and photography. What kind of really cool floriculture have you been growing? I've been growing zinnias, marigolds, sunflowers, and a few other flowers. You got some big, pretty flowers growing this past summer. So what were your photographs of? My photographs were of two of my big sunflowers. Okay. What were your least favorite projects? <laughs> <laughs> been here today. <laughs> I don't know. It's okay to say record books because we're just sitting here right now. And it's really okay because we do that because it helps us learn and grow and re reflect. And it's skills we need for a lifetime, but it's not all the time. I got 12 years of it, so I can attest to that. <laughs> so you two gentlemen can know what the question's going to be. What's your least favorite when you, I come to ask you that? <laughs> okay, Justin, you want to introduce yourself? My name is Justin Lasky. I'm in our Boosters 4 H Club. My favorite projects are electrical and geology. And I took a, a three-way electrical circuit fair this year and did well. Thanks. Least favorite? Another <laughs> <laughs> book. Know the answer now. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jay Slavsky. I'm from the Barbara's Fish 4 H Club. My two favorite projects are horticulture and electrical. My, and my brother did, I took a three way switch and I grow pumpkins. And my least favorite thing is writing out the report for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really interested in your horticulture notebook last year where you tried to tackle the whole squash bug problem. In your garden because I battle that at my own home. And somehow we got them this year. Did you? Oh. Well, you worked on them really hard. You got them like you got them taken care of or you like got them taken care of. Got them eradicated. Wow. Well, nice. oh they'll probably be here next year. So not as bad. Right. Well, that's a that's a big project. That's one that we get lots of calls in the office about. So so now you know. Who to say, hey, talk to. Refer to Jace, yeah. yeah. Have Jace let you know what to do about those. We, we burned the bale and I had some squash in my garden and it seems they moved to my garden. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's the squash. It's always a challenge, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So do you see yourselves going into agriculture or, or maybe college is a little too far away to think too much about that, but thinking what do you think this is preparing you for? Thinking about the electrical trade. That would be good. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe like the flower trade, but the one I'm thinking the most of, which I don't have a project of, is maybe being a nurse. Oh, nice. Oh, we need lots of nurses and lots of health care. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's moving towards a career at this point. It's okay. It's really okay. Open up and it's his goal, though, that you met this year after three years of working on it. I finally got a pumpkin shaped hair. So I'm excited about that. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm good. So, how big was this pumpkin? Medium. Okay. Our face, which is kind of number 41. So, what would make, what would distinguish? distinguish it in a way to make it worthy of a ribbon or is it the shape of it or the well there is the reason i think it got to the state was because the name the type it was scar face so if the judge did see some scars on it the judge would be okay with it which is kind of an issue in my garden <laughs> <laughs> so this was a name you came up with yourself to identify it it's is it the variety yeah, it's, okay. it's a variety. So it because that would normally be something a judge would criticize on a pumpkin is if it has any scarring or blemishes. And so that, that's very smart. That except, that kind of takes care of that whole part of why they would critique something. It's a medium vegetable, it's an orange. It's not as warty as a red warty, but it has some warts on it. It's not making mm -hmm. it oh. Well. So what's like the biggest pumpkin you've ever grown? That's for all of you. I mean, I, I ever want to say you hear about these huge ones, or you? Yeah, the one at the state fair this year was two, was two thousand nine pounds, I think, something around like that. So what did they do to get it that big? It was on a <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there was there was a lady that told me about maybe maybe we should try milk feed like taking a little wire that's really small and it's almost like a tube putting it in what some sort of milk thing is and putting it into that pumpkin and she said that she heard that it would make the pumpkin grow really big they I'm probably milk fed it it's like I'm an ib for a pumpkin yeah <laughs> there are varieties that grow huge in fact just stomp all over them okay. and then they eat the seeds <laughs> well i have some extra pallets and so if you need a pallet <laughs> Let me know. And, yeah. You're going to try. Girl. I don't think they're that scarce, pallets are. But... <laughs> Do you have anything else you'd like to add? How many years have you each been in 4-H? This would probably be my, I, this would be my second year as a full-fledged member. Mm -hmm. And how old are you? I am nine years old, but my 4-H age is eight since I was born in April. <laughs> okay. But you were also a cloverbud. Yes. So you were involved when you were five and six. Okay. Also, also, I've been doing going on geology trips since I was two with my brother. <laughs> oh, okay. Eight years. I'm eight years in 4-H. My 4-H age is 14. And he's lucky he gets born. He was born December 27, so he gets his real 4-H. He's real. What my fault? Like fresh person. <laughs> Five years. What's your real 4 H age? Eleven. I think it's ten. Yeah. But October one, it'll be eleven again. So you're good. New 4 H year. And then a couple, of, and then in a couple of months, it'll be twelve. <laughs> well, Jill, what is your favorite part of 4 H? Oh, my favorite part of 4 H is. I think it's just the experiences that we have when we have groups of kids together and they're learning and it's exciting and they're trying new things. I think that's that's my very favorite part of it. But as a 4-H'er, my major project was the dog project and I trained um, service dogs. I trained seeing eye dog puppies. So that was my 
that was my big thing when I was a 4-H. And, and I sadly, I missed out on the experience of 4-H, but I, as far as in the room, how many here have been involved in 4-H? Ron, we're kind of out of the loop here, so we're... Awesome. My dad was involved in 4-H, so that's probably how, how we found out about it. Well, the other thing I think you can count is if you've been a 4-H parent, because that <laughs> is as big of an experience as being a 4 h -er, because 4-H really does involve the entire family. So it's, a, it's yes, being a 4-H parent is also huge. Sure. Okay. Well, my doctor, she knows the nightmare of getting record books in minutes before the deadline. <laughs> And being a 4 H parent does qualify you to play in the alumni basketball tournament. So, yeah, yeah in case all, you were wondering, yeah. they're all good to know. Get that date on your calendar, eh, Mark? Mark is just going to push wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to close it out, hey, would you all go ahead and give us the 4 H creed? Pledge. Pledge. And do the pledge? The, yeah, it's not anything. Oh, and Megan, you need to start this. We haven't heard your favorite question. Yes, we should hear from yeah. Megan. Megan is our Megan Iguano is our 4 H office professional. And I will say that when she was a 4 H'er, I did keep copies of her 4 H stories because they were so interesting and unique. <laughs> because she is the ultimate teller of all things true. <laughs> so 4 H pledge? You ready? Okay. I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living, my club, my community, my country, and my world. Thank you very much. Absolutely. You want a picture? With and our motto yes. is to make the best better. Yes. All right. Do you, guys you want to come back behind us here and we'll take it out of the way? Oh, <laughs> you're the one for a should be in the middle. You get a couple on one on two on this side and yeah, balance it out. Don't stand behind your brother. Yeah, you make sure, <laughs> make sure we can see you. We'll have a on this. Oh, you want to make a presentation here, Lynn? Couple just to make sure. There we go. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We'll take a copy. Okay. Okay. Just need a copy of it. I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're fine. We'll get that. Thank you. Oh, you yeah. did a great job. You're welcome. It's great to see you again. Thank you. Yes, you're awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jim. I'll get a copy and then I'll put this. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, okay, we have one more proclamation. And is there someone here for that? Or okay. So I'll go ahead and read that. Uh, this is for the County of Dixon County Commissioner's Proclamation. Whereas approximately one in every eight hundred children are born with Down syndrome, representing approximately five thousand births per year in the United States. And whereas while research and early intervention have resulted in a dramatic improvements in the lifespan and the potential of those who are affected, more investigation is needed in the causes and treatment of Down syndrome. And whereas the people with Down syndrome possess a wide range of abilities and are active participants in educational, occupational, social and recreational circles of the community, and whereas developed by the National Down Syndrome Society in 1995, the Buddy Walk is an annual event in cities across Kansas and the nation celebrating the accomplishments of children and adults with Down Syndrome. And whereas the goal of the Buddy Walk is to promote increased understanding and acceptance of people with Down Syndrome while raising funds for scientific research into the causes and treatments now, therefore, we, commissioners of Dixon County, do hereby proclaim October 2023 as Down Syndrome Awareness Month throughout the country and encourage all of Dixon County to work together to promote awareness of the Down Syndrome and to celebrate the accomplishments of individuals and their families. I'll make a motion on that. 
I'll second that motion. We have the motion and second for acceptance of this proclamation and to sign it. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This would be the portion if there would be anyone that is online or anyone that is here that would want to make a comment or had a question on anything that is not on the agenda. Uh, this would be your opportunity to do so. And you just need to signal us online or step up to the podium and give your name and address. And we do not have anyone uh, for public comment for this meeting. So we'll go ahead and move on. Our next item is reports of county officers. Our county administrator, Janelle Dockendorf. Commissioners, just an update on some of the projects going on out in the county. They have uh, almost completed the bridge replacement. It's a 30-foot bridge there at 1015 700 Avenue. Once that's done today, then they'll move to, 100, to 142 Hawk Road, and that's a 20-foot structure. And our staff is able to complete that in actually a, a very short period of time, which is great. They're hauling rock as we're trying to make sure that we've got the rock on hand for next year's projects for Chip Seal, but they're also hauling rock to 3400 Avenue. So uh, that is good. Final mow out has been going on along the county roads. They should be on old 40 and that's where they're going to mow not one pass, but sometimes two or three, depending on the ditches there. So that should be completed for the year. Uh, the public safety projects for our sales tax question have been going on and they've been well received. They have been to uh, quite a few of the municipalities, to the senior centers, to the service organizations. We do have some upcoming uh, meetings scheduled as well. So if anybody has questions on that, please feel free to reach out to myself, to any of our first responders, and we'll uh, do our best to answer them. We held a local emergency planning committee meeting, and that's comprised of law enforcement, fire, health, and um, EMS, 911, highway and environmental services. And that's just a planning committee that we've put together. It's been in place for several years, but in the event of a disaster and how we're gonna respond and and, and uh, the best way to move forward with different things like that. And we talked about a few things that we've got coming up, you know, that uh, have been planned. So, and then also our countywide cleanup that's coming up October 16th to October 20th. There's information on the environmental services page or our Facebook page as well. So and if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to, to Derek or Sarah at Environmental Services. They'll talk about what materials can be accepted, how the process will work, and the city will be involved in that as well. So and that's all I would have. Okay, thank you. Our county counselor, Doug Thompson. Well, I have just a couple. Oh, you're one of the four H's back there first, but <laughs> don't have eyes on, so I would defer to them. <laughs> Were you a 4 H'er? No. Oh, okay. well, you and I miss out too. I didn't have time to do that. I did. Uh, it doesn't matter. Same as you guys did too, probably. <laughs> Helping with every cattle and uh, everything and going to get the milk cows, bringing them back in every night and doing all that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A couple of things. Uh, one is I dropped off a couple of deeds to, uh, to Janelle for um, uh, some property on Old 40. And uh, hopefully that'll take care of that situation. The other one is uh, I sent um, emails this morning to the attorneys that are on the court appointed list uh, for Dickinson County and uh, see if they're going to stay on the list for appointments or if we have to look elsewhere for uh, attorneys that are uh, willing to be on that contract. As soon as I know that, why then I'll share that information with you. That's all I've done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lynn, I see Jessica back there. I just also wanted to give a shout out to the EDC and the open house at Central Plain CDL last night. Uh, it was, I thought it was excellent and I appreciate that. So they, it's, it's a much needed service that will be here in the county for CDL training. So I think that was great. Okay, thank you. Under notices and communications, we just had a few things here. North Central Regional Planning Commission sent us their pamphlet. Um, we also have information, uh, Janelle, and I'll give this for your review, and it's just from FEMA, Federal Emergency Management, and it just says this is to notify you of the final flood hazard determination for Dixon County. 
And I think some of that we've already received information, but um, if we need to keep this in our records, you'll have that. Um, was there anything else that anybody had come up? I don't have anything. Okay. We do not have any resolutions or unfinished business. Under other business, the first thing we have is a memorandum of understanding with the Abilene Animal Hospital. So Janelle, if you'd give us a little bit of the background on it and what we're looking at here. So commissioners, uh, this is uh, the memorandum of understanding that you had approved in at the end of August, on August uh, the 31st, but there were some questions that came up from it on how the process was going to be handled. So we had invited Dr. Rankin in to discuss that with you during the study session. And basically what is going to be happening is instead of them reaching out to the sheriff's department and sheriff's department handling stray dogs out in the county that are turned into the animal hospital, then it's now going to, uh, if somebody turns in a, an abandoned animal, they'll contact me and it'll come out of uh, the county administration budget versus the sheriff's budget. It saves some time on the sheriff's side. They don't have the staffing to handle cases that come up with this because they'll have to open up a, a separate case each time there's an abandoned animal or dog. And uh, then we'll still provide a service to our citizens and we won't have animals running out and about. The animal hospital has been doing this for quite a few years. There'll be a three day period that they'll be there They'll, they'll be kept at the animal hospital and they'll do some testing and, and provide a uh, heartworm and then also some vaccinations for cough, rabies and distemper and, and then um, try to find the owner and then adopt them out if, if at all possible, so. Okay. And from our discussion earlier, if there is something where it is a, a, a vicious dog or something where, um, it becomes something that the sheriff has to investigate. I mean, there still would be avenues for, for that to take place. Correct. But this has more to do with stray or wandering dogs that have right. been identified. Yes. Is there, on this MOU, we've probably need to go ahead and uh, approve this. You've, you've already approved it, and then we had the animal hospital sign it today, so. so it's just information. It's information. Mm -hmm. No revision, so. No. It's, so it's ready. So it should for be good with that, yes. Okay. The next item we have is to approve the contract with Ebert Construction, and this is for a bridge at 1022 Old 40 Avenue. Correct, you had uh, seen the bids for the bridge two weeks ago, and we now have the con concrete uh, the contract documents. Boy, if I could speak, that would help. And this is at 1022 Old 40. It's a replacement structure. It's 20, 20 foot by eight foot uh, bridge that uh, the project should start January 2nd, and the latest completion date would be April the 12th. And it's just, just east of Abilene on Old 40. It's uh, right there by the Old Garden Place Nursery. It's that structure there, and Ebert Construction is the one that was awarded the bid two weeks ago when you when you approved that. So this is just the documents that uh, pertain to that. So we just need a motion to approve signing of the documents. Are they going to be able to maintain one lane open, or there'll be detours we'll and such? And, detour. and Ebert is in mm -hmm. we'll take care of that. Correct. That's part of the uh, the bid that we received. I'll make that motion to approve the contract with Ebert Construction. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second to approve the contract with Ebert Construction. This is for the bridge at 1022 Old 40. Any other discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item we have was one that was added to the agenda uh, in regards to a replacement engine not to exceed $60,000. And I know you covered this before, but um, Janelle, if you'll go ahead and kind of repeat the information on what this replacement is for. And Yesterday, when the highway crew was hauling rock, uh, they blew out an engine in the 2007 International Semi that's got 530,000 miles on it. 
and it also damaged the core. So we're going to have to replace the engine and the core. We're estimating the core is going to be 8,000. The engine is 30, 30 to 40,000. And then also the uh, company that would do the install for us, we take it over to the international dealer there in Salina. So that's where we're coming up with the estimate for $60,000. Dollars and there's a sense of urgency on this as uh, obviously it leaves us one truck short and uh, we were trying to get rock hauled for the upcoming year and get that taken care of before we move on to some other projects. So we're asking that you approve the, uh, the bid for, are they not to exceed on that replacement? So move, second it. We have the motion and the second. Any discussion? One question I just have is, mm -hmm. so what? Would we anticipate the oh. how long this truck would last now? We're extending the life of it. I mean, everything else is fine with it. We purchased this used in 2013, I believe. And it had, I don't remember how many miles it had on it, but uh, we put on quite a few miles. So 530, and I know that the semis, we can get even, even more miles on that. Uh, there's some that can be millions. Of miles on that so and with the new engine we, we would expect this to last at minimum 20 years so i was going to say it was a decade or so yeah it was right. village recommendation that everything else was good and everything was good yeah. yeah everything else was good right so replace the engine and then we should be should be good for a good number of years long after i'm gone <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily It'll be around a couple of decades oh, okay <laughs> um we have the motion of the second all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, thank you again, um, Stats family, 4-Hers. Great to have you here. Latsky. Latsky. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> I knew you said that. I'm glad you corrected that. And that's another name, Lyona name, so I don't know why that was. Maybe because there's a Z in it, I guess. I threw that in there. So, yes, thank you to the Latsky family for being here. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second it. We have the motion and the second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned.